Good morning. Today's passage is from Numbers chapter 6, verses 13 through 27. Numbers chapter 6, verses 13 through 27. Let's read the word of God together. Now this is the law of the Nazarite. When the period of the dedication is over, they are to be brought to the entrance of the tent of meeting. There, they are to present their offerings to the Lord, a year-old male lamb without defect for a burnt offering, a year-old ewe lamb without defect for a sin offering, a ram without defect for a fellowship offering, together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, and a basket of bread made with the finest flour and without yeast, thick loaves with olive oil mixed in, and thin loaves brushed with olive oil. The priest is to present all these before the Lord and make the sin offering and the burnt offering. He is to present the basket of unleavened bread and to sacrifice the ram as a fellowship offering to the Lord, together with this grain offering and drink offering. Then at the entrance to the tent of meeting, the Nazarite must shave off the hair that symbolizes their dedication. They are to take the hair and put it in the fire that is under the sacrifice of the fellowship offering. After the Nazarite has shaved off the hair that symbolizes their dedication, the priest is to place in their hands a boiled shoulder of the ram and one thick loaf and one thin loaf from the basket, both made without yeast. The priest shall then wave these before the Lord as a wave offering. They are holy and belong to the priest, together with the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who vows offering to the Lord in accordance with the dedication, in addition to whatever else they can afford. They must fulfill the vows they have made according to the law of the Nazarite. Verse 22. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord will make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. You know, in order to understand our passage today, uh, we have to go back a little bit uh, to the beginning of chapter 6, which talks about the Nazarite vow. A Nazarite, Nazarite vow is taken by individuals who have voluntarily dedicated themselves to God. The vow is a decision, an action, and desire of the people who want to yield themselves to God completely. It is a vow of dedication to the Lord. There are five components or features of a Nazarite vow. One, it is voluntary. Two, it can be done by either men or women. Three, it has a specific time frame. Four, it has a specific requirements and restrictions. And five, at its conclusion, a sacrifice is offered. The vow of the Nazarite was to express one's special desire to draw close to God and to separate oneself from the comforts and pleasures of this world. It is more than a normal promise. It concerned what one ate, how one looked, and with whom one associated with. The most well-known uh, Nazarite, or one of the most well-known Nazarites in the Bible, is probably Samson. Let me read Judges, chapter 13, verse 7. But he said to me, You will become pregnant and have a son. Now then drink no more wine or fermented drink, and do not eat anything unclean, because the boy will be a Nazarite of God from the womb until the day of his death. Samson was specifically chosen by God, while yet unborn, to be a Nazarite. For Samson, it was a lifelong vow. One of the attributes of Samson was his incredible strength. And we know that his strength was connected to his uncut hair, which is one of the restrictions of the Nazarite vow. When his hair was cut, he lost his strength and fell to his enemies. Samson was chosen for life. But what we read in Numbers is that the Nazarite vow had a beginning and an end. Numbers 6.8 says, 
throughout the period of their dedication. And our opening verse today says, when the period of their dedication is over. This shows us that there is a beginning and that there is an ending period of the vow. And there were specific things the Nazarites could and could not do as they entered into the vow. Same as when they ended the vow. There was a very specific way that the vow was to be completed. The vow of the Nazarite ended with a public ceremony. With the extensive sacrifices, three different animals were involved. It was more than just fulfilling a certain time period. There were very precise requirements to end the vow. And on top of the animal sacrifices, the person's hair was cut and put on the altar. Remember that the vow said that a person cannot cut his or her hair. At the conclusion of the vow, the hair that was preserved, uncut, during the period of the dedication is cut and put on the altar. Afterwards, the Nazarite can drink wine, which was, which was the official conclusion of the vow. You know, we don't practice this Nazarite vow today. So how do we apply this to our modern day? The principle behind the Nazarite vow is this, a vow of dedication to the Lord. The Nazarite vows to separate himself or herself from the world. And we can make this vow to the Lord today. We can choose to decisively separate from the world. A Nazarite abstained from drinking alcohol, cutting hair. A Nazarite lived a different life than others, set apart for God. And aren't we as Christians called to do the same? You know, Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, Paul is calling us to commitment. He's calling Christians to make a decisive commitment to take action to serve God. He is challenging or calling us to change. Choose to become a living sacrifice as an act of worship. In other places, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, we're called to be holy. It says, Be but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. We're called to be holy, set apart or separated from the world. There are things in our lives that are hindering our walk with God. We have conformed to the world. What is it that you need to separate from the world? Are you willing to decisively separate from the world so as to grow in your walk and deepen your faith? Make this a prayer to the Lord today. Lord, help me to decisively separate from the world. Help me to decisively separate from the world. Let's pray. Father God, that is our prayer, Lord God, today. You call us to uh, commitment. You call us to change. You call us to be holy. Help us to, help us to distinctively separate from the world so that we may worship, so that we may follow, so that we may grow as a disciple of Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful day. My prayer is that you will make that a prayer to, to the Lord. God bless you.